I wanted this interview to be a little bit more timely because like you, you deal with clutter, right? And I feel like people might be dealing with clutter now even more than ever because they're in lockdown. Yes. What is it that you think people are searching for right now? Probably quick clutter hacks, you know, to, you know, in 10 minutes or less. That's a big thing I've been talking about um, on interviews and Instagram lives is like really quick ways to get, you know, wins and handle the clutter quickly instead of it taking, you know, six hour block of your time or something. So, 10 yeah. minute clutter hacks for coronavirus yep. lockdown. Yep. That's perfect. Something like that. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> Let's oh, do it. I'll wing it. I'll wing it. All right. Welcome, Katie. Today, we are going to learn about 10-minute clutter hack secrets that you can use during the freak show that is going on right now with the coronavirus lockdown right now everybody's at their homes if you have been prob have been having problems with clutter probably now you have even more problem so that's why i reached out to the expert of decluttering katie wells and she's going to give us his, her fast and quick secrets so that you can just get it over with and go back to whatever it is that you're challenge with during your day-to-day -day life during the lockdown. Katie, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. It's always such a treat to talk with you. So you were telling me that you're right now on a lockdown yourself with your family and uh, your kids are here. You had, you had your kids in Montessori and now you're at, they're at home. So it's really challenging and I'm sure that you are facing all these challenges. So can you first, before we get into what you're doing yourself, just give us the um, quick, fast route on how, what, what is this 10 minute declutter hack? Yeah, so these are things that I've been doing for years. Some of them kind of happened organically um, over time and some of them I've really kind of just figured out on my own along the way after um, teaching myself how to declutter and keep the clutter at bay successfully and some of them just working with um, clients over the years because I've been doing virtual decluttering for um, two years now as well. So um, I've got three amazing hacks I wanted to share with your audience today if that's cool. Um, just like you said, um, it's stuff is more relevant than ever and one thing, um, you know, I really want to encourage people watching or listening that um, you know, you can have an uncluttered home and still be a parent. Like you can have kids and still have an uncluttered home. I know that's really? like a big false belief out there. It's like, I well, don't know. Look at here. It's, it's yeah, I <laughs> like if I switch this camera over here, it's a mess. So please, please, I need help. <laughs> no. Well, it's just, it's kind of, uh, you know, just letting you know, like, okay, like just let's work on that mindset shift first, because if you are always going to be like, this isn't going to work for me, these tips she's sharing aren't aren't going to work because of blank, you know, kids or my husband's a hoarder or whatever that is. Like, so let's just focus on really quick shifting that mindset, knowing it is possible. And I just want to make a clarification too, that clutter isn't really the same thing as mess. Like I have a simplified uncluttered home, but I've got a five and a three-year-old, two boys, and they are like crazy energetic. And the, the little things we do have left in our home that are useful or that are toys for them and that spark joy for all of us, they can still destroy my house in minutes when I'm not looking. <laughs> and so the difference is instead of taking two hours at the end of the night to pick up all the junk, it takes me 10 minutes or less. So um, don't get clutter and mess confused. Your house can still be messy even if it's uncluttered. So I just wanted to clarify that too for everyone listening. It doesn't mean if you have an uncluttered home, your house is always perfectly tidy. I think that's so unrealistic. Um, you know, my house doesn't look like a pottery barn ad a lot of the time. But again, if you want it to look like that, if you unclutter your home, expect like a 10 minute cleanup at, at the end of the night and it will like save your sanity. So um, anyway, getting back to those declutter hacks, um, the first one that's absolutely changed my life and hundreds and thousands of my students now is what I call a clutter audit. So what I really love about these is you don't have to schedule extra time in your day. You don't have to put it in your Google calendar and be like, I need to do 
you know, decluttering, you know, Katie told me to declutter. So I have to put it in my calendar. And you're also incorporating these into your normal everyday routine. And really it's just becoming, um, or making a habit out of it. So clutter audits are when, um, you're doing any of your normal household chores and routines. Like, um, let's for a great example would be putting the dishes away. So, um, when you're putting the dishes away and you open up your cabinets to put your coffee, your clean coffee mugs back, do a quick clutter audit look at the back of your kitchen cabinet and go, oh my gosh, those 10 mugs back there, I haven't touched, my husband and I haven't used. Um, some of them are chips, some of them I just, like why am I even hanging on to them? They never get touched. So sweep those out. Um, we've all kind of probably been attacked by sippy cups and things falling out of the cabinets <laughs> because they get so overstuffed and overfilled. So do these quick clutter audits and just take two minutes. It doesn't even have to be 10. 30 seconds even, it's amazing what you can pull and purge. And that's like, um, you know, the low hanging fruit, just the stuff that is what I call just, it's again, it's the easy stuff. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to question, you know, oh, is, should I really get rid of this? It's stuff you just, your gut knows it can go because you've got excess. So, um, you know, incorporate that into your normal everyday routine. I've been doing a lot of cleaning. Um, that's kind of been a stress relief for me, ironically. So when you're going to clean your home, we all keep our cleaning stuff maybe under the sink, under the kitchen sink, or maybe in your laundry room, wherever that is for you. Um, open, open that space and look in there and do a quick scan and go, oh my gosh, there's 50 bottles of cleaning crap in here. You know, 30 of them I'd never use. Um, I can get rid of these. Maybe they're expired. Maybe like your grandma gave them to you or your mom and it's just not something you like to use. You hate the scent, whatever it is, like pull that stuff, get rid of it. And so again, every time you're doing any type of routine in your life, putting laundry back, you know, in your toddler's room, look at the dresser and go, oh my gosh, these are stained. I hate these. My, my kid, for example, my five-year-old is obsessed with wearing the same clothes over and over. He wears like four outfits. So, you know, I can put the other outfits in my three-year-old's room because he's going to grow into them. Or if I didn't have my three-year-old, I would just donate them. Things like that. So it's just these tiny parts of your day and retraining your brain to just constantly be editing stuff in your house. So that's the first I have one. a question that, here. Any questions I have a there? question. So, because <laughs> yeah. I'm the, so my husband is a clean one and I'm, I'm, yeah. the, I'm the hoarder. And I cannot let go of stuff, which is weird because I've traveled all my life. And every time, so every time I've decluttered is when I've packed from a country and I, it was it literally cost me money to move everything. So that's when I just got rid of stuff. Otherwise, if I open this closet over here, like I have microphones that are not working, but I'm not, I, I'm like, um, but maybe one, like I always had this excuse. I'm like, okay, yeah. so I have, a, I have my studio over here, right? So one of the things that I just can't let go of, like, okay, so maybe one day my working microphone isn't working and that what, what microphone that is kind of working might come to my help. So I'm just going to keep it just in case there is an absolute yes. emergency. Like I always have an excuse and I know that day is never going to come. How do you deal with these excuses? <laughs> One thing I, I just try and preach often is, yeah, that's a really common thing. Like, well, I could get rid of this, but it, you know, like this item is useful, whether it's like rubber bands or the bread, you know, the bread tie or your microphone you're talking about. And I'm all my, you know, I challenge my, you know, students and people watching this, like if it's useful, you'd be using it. Um, it becomes very not useful very quickly if you never touch it. And it's, you know, taking away from your life if it's becoming clutter and adding stress, you know, to your day. And I have lots of moms and it's funny you mentioned your closet. I don't know if this is something you can resonate with, but a lot of moms have reached out and, and say like a lot of my clutter, I keep behind closed doors. So I kind of have this tidy home, you know, that I see, but, <laughs> but every time I pass this closed closet door, I get stressed out because it's, it's this project that's just like haunting yeah. me, like get rid yeah. of the clutter. And so that's a sign, right? If it's increasing your stress, even if it's behind a closed door, like, is it really useful or just take five minutes and go, you know what, if I am going to try and fix this, let's do a quick Google search. If I can get this fixed, I'm just going to spend the five, 10 minutes now and wrap up this project. And then I'll know like it's worth keeping or, you know, I just have to part with maybe it was a bad purchase or try and get a refund or whatever that is. Just finish out that cycle because otherwise it's always going to be there to kind of be in the back of your brain telling you, hey, Kiana, there's more stuff to be done. And that, of course, that's the last thing we need is bombs, right? Yeah. No, <laughs> you know? All right. So let's go back to hack number two. 
Hack number two, I call this the cardboard box countdown. Um, a lot of us are doing online orders right now, whether that's food, you know, makeup, everything's online and it, a lot of it was prior to lockdown. Um, but I think we'd all be lying if we said we didn't have any cardboard boxes just hanging out in our garage waiting to get broken down. So pull two boxes out, make this super easy on yourself. Use one for like trash, one for donate and set a timer, 10, five, eight minutes, however much you want. You can get your kiddos involved in this if they are maybe like five up. Um, you know, it's kind of fun to get family involved <laughs> and also decluttering and just get, get to cluttering on that low hanging fruit. And for a lot of people, I'm talking about like surface areas, kitchen counters, kitchen islands, um, those clutter hotspots in your home, maybe coffee tables, getting rid of those old magazines, books, things that you know just need to go old electronics, um, et cetera. And again, that's kind of like that superficial clutter that you're not really having to invest time and thought into getting rid of. You just know like now's the time, I'm sick of this, it's gotta go. Um, and again, that's a really beautiful, su super simple thing you can do in however many minutes you want. And you can even make it fun, put on some music. Again, decluttering doesn't have to be so serious and like painstakingly, <laughs> you know, like this painstaking chore that it is and it can be for a lot of people. I know it's not always easy, but try and make it as lighthearted and fun as you can. That's again, so for us, you mentioned it. So for us, our uh, kitchen table has become that like all of yeah. my daughter's books, like yeah. we can find everything on it. Like literally it's a store within itself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's just, the dumping grounds. Yep. Yeah. And then like we have now five people in the house and then my mom, everyone like, can you, and then my husband gets, I'm like, ah, I'm like, it's, so you're, you're, you're saying that you just, you set a time and just do it. Like how often do you do that? Cause we do that like every once in a while, but it gets piled up again. Like, yeah. Is it okay to let it pile up? You know, uh, that's a really good question. So I'm going to lead with this, that just like gravity pulls us down and keeps us on the ground, it's a law that stuff attracts stuff, clutter attracts clutter. So if you have a cleaned off kitchen table and someone decides to put their homework on there or their purse on there, every single time, you can do this test in your house, do it one morning, completely clear the kitchen table off, put one thing on there, and then your husband's going to come and put his phone charger or his briefcase. And then your mom, who's quarantined with you, right, is going to come put, you know, a hot, you know, hot pad. Maybe she's cooking. And it's going to add up throughout the day versus if you don't, less stuff will end up there at the end of the day. So I encourage, I'm not all about like every service area has to be cleaned off, but if that's something you're struggling with, that's a sign that you don't maybe have, you know, established drop zones in your house. Maybe you could add an organizational component. Maybe people in your home don't know where their stuff needs to go. And so without that, everything lands on that kind of drop it's zone. Easier. It's, the, it's the easy. Yeah. Factor, it's the easy. It's right, right? there. Like, oh, it's let's convenient. just put it there. Yeah. 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 So those are all things I would encourage you kind of assess and handle. That way you're not every day going, oh my gosh, why is this stuff back on the kitchen table? I don't want to have to do this every day, right? So keep it clean. All right. That's awesome. So let's get to the final hack. Yes. Okay. This is a fun one. This is something um, I created, I don't know, maybe six months ago when I was working with a student of mine doing some virtual decluttering and it's an acronym I came up with, came up with and it's really great for toddlers too because it's A, B, C, D, E. So if they're learning their alphabet, <laughs> you can teach them that. So A, B, C, D, E. So the A, B, C portion stands for always be carrying. Um, this is a hack. Um, again, I've had for years, even before I was, uh, you know, a declutter pro. So I can't imagine what my home would have looked like if I didn't already have this habit. So I never, Kiana, ever, ever, ever leave a room empty handed ever. I've got two kids. They're constantly throughout the day, especially now that we're home 24 seven, moving things, putting them where they don't belong and leaving them. And so always be caring, never leave the room empty handed. This is going to save literally so much time at the end of your day. So that way you can have time for whatever it is you want to do. Maybe that's mommy time, self-care, taking a bath. I've been binge watching um, my favorite show right now, Shit's Creek on Netflix. Oh yeah, you know, I like watched that. Now, <laughs> yes. Now more than ever, like mom, we need to decompress. And if we're like constantly chasing our kids around, you know, picking up after them and like, it's, I've been there and it's really, really frustrating. And so not only that, but helping your, you know, trying to, you know, encourage your kids to do the same, always be caring, putting things back after they're done with their homeschool or, you know, like art projects. That's a really, really big clutter hack. And then the DE portion of the ABCDE 
um, acronym is always be caring, decluttering, and editing. So one thing I want to encourage all your watchers and listeners to be doing is, you know, people reach out to me frequently and they go, Katie, I, I did a really great purge, you know, six months ago. I feel, I felt so good afterward, but you know, the clutter's back and I, and I don't know what to do. And as parents and as moms and as women, we have so many phases in our life. You know, we have, you know, as parents, we've got baby phase, you know, newborn, baby, like toddler, Change you know, it. now my five-year-old's riding a bike and that requires different things. So yeah. if we're always just training our brain to look at our items in our house and see they're either serving us or they're not, there's really, really no in between in my opinion. And so just because we kept, you know, the baby carrier last time we did in a declutter doesn't mean we need to keep it now. And that really kind of takes some of the emotion out of things and it makes it more like logical to our brains. So always be kind of editing and making sure that the things we're having, we're keeping in our home align with, you know, the purpose we want and the purpose we want to have, if that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. And that is actually one thing that I do uh, from my office. That is the only thing that I do. I just feel, <laughs> I always, when I'm going down, I always make sure if there is something and still my, my, desk is a mess, but I always carry something down. Yes. Me. Yeah. No, that totally makes sense. I, yeah, I mean, I, that's absolutely right. Like, like my daughter now she's like painting and like drawing and crayons and the, oh my God, everything is all over the place. So, yeah. oh my God, this just gave me, oh, <laughs> <laughs> now I thought of her playroom. Okay. I'm going to be applying these hacks, like literally. Good. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> No, you don't want to see her playroom. <laughs> her playroom. We were potty training her last week. It didn't work out. And we were just trying to accommodate whatever it was for her to just sit on the yeah. potty. She would not. And she would hold it. She held her number one and number two wow. for six hours. She would not go oh on the gosh. potty. She would not go on the potty. And for that reason, and then like, oh my God, it's been just crazy. And now her <laughs> ground is. I don't know. We've been more so like, just take this, take this. We'll give you this. We'll give you sure, that. Sure. <laughs> not, she's not falling for it, huh? No, she's very smart. And because I feel like the reason why, I mean, this like, takes away from the hacks, but there's a little bit of an insight of what's happening. So we had like my mom, my husband and myself, all of us at her in different languages. Cause I speak Farsi to her. My mom and I speak, and my, me, my husband speaks, speaks English and my, like, and everybody was saying a different thing to her. If you do, if you go potty, we'll do this. Everybody was giving a different reward. Everybody had their own thing. We were not on the same page. She got absolutely overwhelmed. And she's like, nope, I'm not <laughs> sitting on the pot. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. So yeah, so that's that. And now we're getting out of that phase again. We were in it again, out of it. It's, it's, yeah, oh the yeah. phases are I've been there. <laughs> just <Right. ever. laughs> You're, you're, yeah, there's, yeah, there's so many phases and yeah, it's it goes by quick. And before you know it, it's like, gosh, my kid's 20. I'm sure this is how it'll be. And I still have their baby carrier. So just get rid of it now. You know, <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to fit when he's 20. <laughs> Her diapers from like the zero. So I, yes. I'm the one, as I said, like I wanted to like hold all the diapers, like the leftover diapers in case we have another kid. And my mm -hmm. husband, he's a declutter master. He just, without me knowing, he just goes and throws them away. And I'm like, why did you throw them away? He's like, we'll just buy new ones. <laughs> like, sure, so that's sure. Basically. So there are so many struggles. I, I, and I, I'm sure and that's why people go to you because like now that you talked about it, I was keeping on, I, I didn't even know that that is something that I actually personally struggle with. But when you talked about it, I'm like, oh my God, like I have personal issues, like even from my upbringing that, throwing it away is wasteful, no matter how mm -hmm. much you don't even use it. And that's why like we actually in our town, we have this um, gift economy Facebook group that everybody, yes. when they want to declutter, they give it to each other so that Absolutely. that way you're not actually adding to environment, like the toys and stuff that you're never going to use, right. but they're still, still in good shape. We give it to the, that has been one way of me being able to actually throw things, not throw things out, but like declutter my house um and i think that 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 is an interesting thing to keep in mind as well donating like giving it if you have issues with not wanting to waste which is the issue that i have i think don't donating that you mentioned as well is something to consider 
Well, thank you so much, Katie. <laughs> you are so welcome. I can see your wheels spinning, so. <laughs> I know. I was like, I didn't even think I had a problem. I thought this was going to be for our viewers, and then it brought my problem to the service. I'm like, oh, damn it. I have to think about it now. All right. <laughs> so I can roll. Thank you so much, Katie. And you people watching, so welcome. I hope you took a ton of, uh, away from it. You can find Katie. I'm going to add her social media on top of her uh, screen over here. I think it's going to be that way. And I'm going <laughs> to add a link to her program. If you want to really get deeper into decluttering in the description area, if you like this video, like it, share it with any of the moms in your life who are struggling, you think they can benefit from it because people maybe don't even talk about it. So just share it and put it out there so that it's not like, hey, I thought you might need this. That's, that's <laughs> yellow. <laughs> like just put that's it on your Facebook. Your house is a mess, honey. Take, watch this video. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so don't do that. But just share it like anonymously <laughs> on people's Facebook. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Katie. Happy lockdown. Happy quarantine. I do have a tradition. I ask for a silly face for my guests at the end of it. Oh, sure. Do it. <laughs> Do you like right Three, now? Three, two, one. Do it. <laughs>